Now, if you grip the club like this, strong in the lead hand to where you're seeing three to four knuckles at setup, you absolutely have to change it because amateur golfers have no business using that grip and successfully making that grip work. This is gonna add so many individual faults into your golf swing, it is not worth its time to grip the club like that. So let's explain why gripping the club strong in your lead hand is so damaging to your golf game and then how to grip the club differently to have a far more consistent swing. So the first reason why having a strong lead hand grip is terrible for your golf game is what you need to do in order to make that club face square. So this is your grip to wrist angle matchup. You need to have a cupped left wrist to be able to make this grip work. So you can see at setup, I've got a cup on the left wrist and then throughout the swing, if I'm gonna keep this face square to my spine angle, that left wrist needs to be cupped. Now, that is so damaging for the amateur golfer because for you, to be able to keep that left wrist cut, a good couple of things are gonna to happen to your golf swing, or I say a bad couple of things are going to happen. Number one, you're gonna to start to get an across the line shaft, which yes, a lot of players over time have made that swing work. But again, this is golf instruction to help the amateur golfer, not what the outliers of professional golf do. So if you are getting up to the top with an across the line shaft, and you can see at how wrist angle, flat, more down the line, bowed, more laid off, cup, across the line. For a golfer who typically has a shorter swing, they will then, from there, with that short swing, they will struggle to get that club to shallow out. If they had a real long swing, yeah, they might have time to be able to pitch it behind them, but for a shorter swing player with not that great mobility, they're gonna steepen the shaft. So that's number two. A cup left wrist forces you to steepen the shaft. It is a steepening move on the golf club. So that will really affect your quality of strike, angle of attack, plenty of things. That's gonna really create a very big timing orientated move. So number three, it's gonna cause you to cast at the golf ball, throw those angles, because again, you need to have that left wrist cupped to be able to keep that club face square. If you then start to try and flatten out that wrist, like you see a lot of YouTube videos with the advice they give, your club face is going to be pointing massively left at impact. You're gonna hit the ball off the planet left. So that is where big things happen from that. You cannot, have anything other than a cup left wrist with a strong grip, but you'll have a whole host of other issues occur because of that cupping. So number two, this is how the club shaft will want to travel in the backswing to be able to make this work. So as you're swinging back with a stronger grip, again, to keep the face square, your shaft will have to move a little bit more in, in the backswing, which is why we see players like Matthew Fitzpatrick have this real inside takeaway. Again, Matthew Fitzpatrick can make this work great, but if you're watching these videos, you're not Matthew Fitzpatrick or even close to his skill level. He is one of the best players in the world. So having this movement where you have to whip the club on the inside, that'll keep the club face square. If I have more of a standard takeaway, club head around the hands or outside the hands, the face is way too strong. We can't do that for a strong grip. So you're gonna whip it on the inside, but that's not it because that's gonna encourage now the club to travel very well, laid off horizontal in that backswing, which we normally see a player then reorganize the shaft up to the top, have to really separate their trail arm, and then again, they get all that cascade of things happening in the downswing. Steep shaft, then having to really reorganize the club from there. So you won't be able to get a backswing that sets you up for an easy downswing. You'll have to have this big, crazy route the club's taking to get up to the top. Even if, let's say, you did have that standard backswing, like I said, club face is just gonna get too strong in the takeaway for a standard takeaway. Club is still gonna be, if you have a steeper shaft travel in the backswing, club face is gonna be too strong, get up to the top. Now the club is pointing to the sky. There's no hope that you're gonna make that work. So number three, this is what you have to do with a very strong club face that you will have from a stronger grip or even steep shaft as a result from what we talked about before to make this work going through impact. A lot of players with this really strong grip, closed face, they would have to start to stand up going through the shot to be able to square that face up. Because when you stand up, what's that gonna do? That's gonna make that club face a little bit squarer to the target. Because when you stand up, that raises the upper body upwards and that will then raise the hands up. And when the hands raise up, the club face opens up. So this is where a lot of golfers think that having a stronger grip is gonna encourage them to get a nice amount of shaft lean. Where yes, that is a functional way to be able to square off a closed club face from a strong grip. 
but you need a ton of club head speed to be able to make that work like a Dustin Johnson, which is again why, like at the beginning of the video, I said this is not a grip for amateur golfers. This is a grip for the elite athletic players because only them could then rotate to the extent to be able to produce that amount of shaft leaners. Absolutely, shaft leaners are a byproduct of rotation. You will need to get open like Dustin Johnson, but at the speed that Dustin Johnson or any of the strong grip players rotate. So the body, of course, if it's not able to do that, it won't do that. What it will do, like we said, it will stand up to be able to get that club face squarer. So that means you're gonna have an awful early extension move that's gonna be caused by the grip. You're gonna have really poor striking control. You're gonna have poor low point control. You're gonna have poor face contact control. Again, after all these, you're going to think, why on earth have I been told by other instructors in the past to grip the club strong, maybe to fix a slice? Got to remember, guys, fixing a slice, you've got to fix, of course, you've got to wonder where, is it club face or is it your club path? To fix a slice, you need that club face to be closed to your club path. But if you're fixing a strong grip, or let's say making your grip strong to make sure that environment is better, you might not be fixing your path at the same time address the path and the club face. Don't just change the grip to fix the club face portion. It's normally a two pronged thing you need to go and approach there. So absolutely, you're going to have to stand up. You do not have the amount of speed to be able to square it off via shaft lean. So let's talk about how to do this a little bit easier, a little bit friendlier for the vast majority of golfers out there. So guys, let's talk about the fix for this and the fix would be gripping the club standard and neutral. So. That is by far an easier grip for the vast majority of players to work with. A lot of players with what they actually try to do from YouTube advice would actually suit a weak grip, especially when it comes to bowing. That's like the grip I have, a slight bit weaker. But standard is great, especially going from strong. You don't want to go all the way to weak. You want to go to standard. So that is where we want to look down at that golf club and see two to two and a half knuckles with our lead hand. That's what we want. That's going to be way easier to do. I'd recommend so many golfers out there to get a grip trainer to be able to help. We see the likes of Scotty Scheffler work with a grip trainer. So if you know the best player in the world at the moment does that, we know it's going to be good for everyone. So, okay, why we want to go more standard is because of a lot of the things golfers are trying to get into their golf swing, but unfortunately have a strong grip. They won't be able to make work with a strong grip. They'll be able to do those exact same movements that they're trying to do in their swing and then work with a more standard grip. So when you've got a standard grip, what's that going to encourage you? In the takeaway, number one, to have a nice hands in, club out or club head on the hands. That's going to help a ton. It's also going to help you with that flatter left wrist. You're going to be able to set up to the golf ball with a nice flat left wrist. If you keep that left wrist flat, the club face is going to stay square. Then as you move up to the top, it's going to encourage a little bit better of a shaft angle, a little bit steeper whilst moving deep. And get up to the top there because I've got that nice now flat wrist because it can keep the face square. I could be in a more friendly top of the back swing position, not across the line. So that's going to help me now to get a way better shallowing move because I've not got any steepeners in my swing. Club face is square, club face is shallow. What's that going to do to my downswing? It's going to make me rotate better to be able to keep the face square and stay down in my posture. So you can see so many things that a squarer, let's say more standard grip encourages, you have to go and really dive into that. It's like I always see with golfers with strong grip, they do it for a band-aid fix is a strong grip. That's where absolutely you can fix a slice by absolutely closing down that club face a ton via a strong grip, but you're gonna get so many other faults come into your golf swing. So that's why really look at your golf swing first before you think, okay, do I wanna make my grip stronger? If I have a ton of speed, that might be the absolutely the answer. But if not, let's fix the issues rather than just fixing and making something stronger. So a good little thing to do just to now that you've got that nice standard left hand grip, is to do something that just encourages you to get good shaft and wrist angle ideals for it. So just grab an alignment stick, put it up the left-hand side of the club. Now we have this alignment stick touching our left side just like so. So what we want to happen, we want, okay, first and foremost, you can see left wrist is flat at set up with my nice neutral grip. Good. So then what we're doing from there, we are sliding this club down. So you can see how it's sliding, the stick is sliding down my side here, just sliding down. If I have that strong grip takeaway where it whips into the inside, that club shaft is going to detach away. So even if you struggle with, let's say, a rolly forearm anyway, this is really going to help you. So then as I start moving back, as I'm turning, getting to mid backswing, you can see how this stick is going to be on the ball line. And then getting up to the top, 
it's either pointing a little bit in front of me or just dead straight behind. So either down the line or slightly laid off. And you can see there, I could check my nice flat left wrist, get the stick pointing in front and just turn through there. So this is called a swing mapping drill. We're mapping out where we want to be with a more standard grip. So, okay, we're not doing this by hitting the shot. This is just nice, slow swings for a practice swing. Slide down the side, pointing on ball line. Nice flat left wrist. Stick in front a little bit and turn. So, absolutely amazing there. So that's where a lot of players, once they go back to hitting with a standard grip, they'll immediately get in some better positions just to try and hit the target. They'll start to get a flatter left wrist, and they will also start to have a better shaft movement and they'll be staying in posture better just from that one fix. So that's why I encourage you all out there to really go about and think, okay, if I've got all these swing faults, let's look at my grip. If I've got a strong grip, it'll be a safe bet to make golf easier for yourself is to grip the club at a standard position. So if you enjoyed this video, click that like button if you want more golf instruction, just like this. Hit the subscribe button, hit the bell button too. Be notified every time I put out a video.